why you need to stop pointing your finger at other people. We are quick to point out a finger at other people. Can you find, can you, can you figure a leper in the Bible? One leper pointing out another leper and talking about, you got lepers. And here his nose is falling off and just because the other leper hand is falling off, you talking about, you got lepers and your nose are falling off. <laughs> can you, can you, can you, lepers stayed together. Oh yes they did, they stayed together, they worked together, and they tried to help the, one another. And that's what we are, we are sinners, and we, 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 we have gotten behind the mass which is in Jesus, in, in our mass, and we need to stay together and work together with one another. Praise the Lord. The mass they call Jesus. The spiritual mass, uh, and the only only remedy for it is the spiritual vaccine. And you don't have to get but one shot, one shot, <laughs> one shot. You don't have to get a booster. One shot will take care of the sin. For the Bible tells us that our sins are washed away. In the water we grave of baptism. So please get this, the, the spiritual vaccine and start wearing the mask that Jesus gives us. He will save your soul from the most deadly virus and that is sin. This sin virus will cause your soul to suffer the second death forever in hell. Revelation 21 and 8, but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and the amendable and the murderers and the warmongers and the sorcerers and the idolaters and uh, all the liars uh, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Who want to be, who want to, who want to, who want the second death? The blood of Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary is the antidote of the vaccine for the sin virus. The blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus shed it, his precious blood. This is the conclusion now. Do you remember I told y'all that was the second conclusion? Well, you dealing with the second conclusion now of the lesson on this morning. I did the first conclusion and we got out of there, but this is the second conclusion. As we, uh, we're going through the second conclusion, you're in the middle of the second conclusion now and don't even realize it. Jesus shed it, his precious blood on yonder's cross, on Calvary. Listen, 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 listen to what, 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 what John said who was there. John said in John 19, 34, uh, he said, But one of the soldiers that was standing there to hasten Jesus' death, the Bible said, uh, with a spear past his side. And forthwith came there out blood and water. Blood and water came out. Why blood and water? The blood, the blood, the blood was for the cleansing of our sins. Well, the cleansing of the sin virus and the water was to wash it away. That's what the blood for. That's the, that's the, that's the old uh, preaching, Rochelle, that you grew up on. You used to hear the preaching say that the water is for the, is for the, is for the washing and the blood is for the cleansing. How do we know that? The Bible tells us that the Bible tells us in, in, in Hebrew 9, 14. Look at Hebrew 9, 14 and see what it says. Hebrew 9, 14 says, how much more shall the blood of Christ who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot of God, uh, but to God purge your conscience from, from dead work to serve the living God. And then he said in the 27th verse, for, for almost all things are by the law purged with blood. And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. Without the shedding of blood, there is no cure for sin. 
without the shedding of not just any blood, but the blood of Jesus. Hebrews 9, 22 said, For almost all things, by the law was purged with blood, and without the shedding of the blood, there is no remission. Under the law, it couldn't remit the sin. It just rolled the sin back. For the blood of bulls and goats could never take away sin, could never away cure the virus, the sin virus. Nothing but his blood. He says in, look what it says in 1 John 1, 7. 1 John 1, 7. Uh, St. John 1, 7. Uh, 1 John 1, 7, that is. It says, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another and the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins. The blood of Jesus Christ is something in the blood. Scientists will tell you that. The doctors will tell you that. Life is in the blood. Let me tell you something. When you lose your blood, you use your life. And Jesus shed his blood on the cross. He gave his life. And the Bible says he didn't do it for himself because he had no sin. But my friend, he took it upon himself. I will sin. In other words, in other words, what Jesus Christ did, he took, he took our disease, suffered for our disease. We are supposed to die and suffer for our disease. But Jesus took our disease. Because let me tell you something. He is so pure until sin won't affect him. That's why he could take it. That's why he could take it. Sin doesn't affect Jesus. It doesn't affect him. Because the blood of Jesus Christ. Sin tried to affect him. And the blood just, just get it out of there. Then he says. He says. He says in Acts 22, 16, the scripture said, why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins. Now, how do we do the washing? How do we do the, the, the blood cleanse and the washing cleansing? Somebody said, how does that happen? You did that this morning. I hope you did it this evening. You, your hands were dirty, your face was dirty, your face was looking like, I can't tell you, but it was looking like something else when you went to the mirror. And you took some soap. And we all took detergent. You know, you got to use what you have. You took detergent or you took some soap. And you took and you wash your face. You just wash your face. Whatever was on your face and on your hand was loose. But guess what? You had to have water to wash it away. And the water washed it away. The water washed it away. And that's what happened. That's what happened. That's why we have to get baptized. We have to, we have, to have our sin washed away after we come in contact with the blood. What is the blood? The blood is in the water. The blood is down there in the water. And so therefore, the scripture tells us that we must believe this. We must believe that Christ died believe that he was buried and resurrected. Believe and then begin to repent. Repent. Start turning from the life that you are living now. Turn away from the sin. I don't want this disease no more. I'm quitting. Then you confess Christ to be God's son. The sweetest name that ever fell for mortal lips. But I believe that Jesus Christ is the son of God. And then be baptized. Why do you get baptized? Wash your sin. And that's one of the reasons why I teach. And I know that the Bible is right. That you can't be saved until you're baptized. Baptism is a washing away of your sins. Acts 22, 16. Washing away of the sin. When you come out of the water, you, 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 you're masked with Jesus. Uh, listen, 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 listen what it says over there in, uh, in, in the book of Romans in, in the uh, sixth chapter of the book of Romans. This thing sounds good to me. I better start slowing up. I'm beginning to get heated up. But uh, listen what he says. Listen what he says. He said, what shall we say then? 
What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace be abound? He said, for God forbid, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not? So as many of you as were baptized, there you go again, into, into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, as Christ, uh, therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ rose from the dead, we too should rise to walk in a newness of life. I'm in contact with the blood in the water. Got to go into the water, the blood is in the water. Spiritually, spiritually, the blood is in the water. That's why you must be baptized. The Bible says, the Bible says, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, that the body of sin, or should I say, the disease of sin might be destroyed, and that henceforth we should not serve sin. Not serve it. Believe this with all of your heart. And then the scripture tells us in our text. Galatians 3, 27. He said, for as many of you that have been baptized into Christ. We put on Christ. We put on the mask. We put on the man. We put on the man. And once you put that mask on, Jesus, don't take it off until you see Jesus. Why won't you need the man? Why won't you need the man until you see Jesus? Why? I'm going to so glad you asked. Jesus is coming back to, from heaven. He's coming back to take us to heaven. He's going to take us to heaven. And once you get to heaven, you won't really need the mass anymore. Because why? First John, the third chapter. Um, the first John, the third chapter, the first, second verse, third verse. Look at what he says. I love this point. He said, Behold, what manner of love uh, the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew us not. He said, Beloved, now we, now are we the sons of God, and it does not appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. Then he says in the third verse, every man that has this hope in him purify himself, even as he is pure. There are three questions in my third conclusion. Here are three questions. Number one, are you wearing your mask? Are you wearing your mask? Are you wearing your mask, your spiritual mask? Are you continuing to wear your spiritual mask? Number two, have you taken it off? Have you taken this mask off because you got the vaccine? Have you taken this mask off because you are tired of it? Have you taken it off? Have you taken the spiritual mask off? And number three would be why not put the spiritual mask on even if you don't wear this mask? Even if you don't wear this mask, you sure enough need the mask of Jesus. I'm finished. If you're here and you want to be saved, if you want to rededicate your life, if you want to come to Jesus and put on the mask, we encourage you to come right now. While we stand and we sing the song of invitation. You have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? And are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood? In the 
soul cleansing blood of the Lamb and all your garments spotless are they white as snow are you white in the blood of the Lamb are you washed in the blood in the soul cleansing blood of the Lamb are your garments spotless are they white as snow are you washed in the blood of the Lamb Amen Saints let's give a little deposit for Brother McClendon with that word for the Lord we thank God for this mighty word we have a few that